You were the chosen one! You know, it's hard for people to realize, and I'm not supposed to say this, and I wasn't supposed to say it then, but... No. It was said that you would destroy this city, not join them! No. <laughs> Nerderotic.com. After the resounding lack of success of the female-centric Ahsoka in 2023, Disney Star Wars decided to start 2024 with this. And we're in 2024 now, and I think uh, it's about time that we had a woman uh, come forward uh, to shape the story in a galaxy far, far away. Boy, here we go not, again. Yeah, I'm out. That was the director of the much unanticipated Ray film, Charmaine Obeyed Chinoy, when 2024 was just hours old. Never mind the fact that she is not the first woman to shape Star Wars and certainly not the first activist woman to shape Star Wars. My body of work over the last 20 years has been uh, guided by my activism and every single piece of work that I've ever created has a piece of activism in it. It could be very overt or it could be covert, but it is there. That is why you fail. But not to worry, Debbie Downer, because Lucasfilm has figured it out. They've cracked the code, they've pounded the analytics, and they're going to turn things around by shaping Star Wars with a female activist showrunner who also happens to be the former personal assistant of Harvey Weinstein. There I go, getting all negative again. Like I said, this one's going to be completely different. It's going to be female-centric with diversity and inclusion. That's right, the long-awaited, much-anticipated Acolyte trailer dropped a couple of days ago, described by Judas Cow, I'm sorry, showrunner Leslie Headland as Frozen meets Kill Bill. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious what that means. Can we elaborate? Are we getting a musical? You're not getting a musical, although that was Kathy's first question when I pitched it to her. She was like, so a musical with a snowman? I was like, I was like no, 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 no. Are you stupid or something? So much of it was about, you know, the kind of villainess actually be a powerful, misunderstood woman. It was hitting me on such a deep level and yet servicing the genre. I mean, why not Will and Grace meets Robocop or Modern Family meets Saw or Sesame Street meets Scared Straight? I don't know, maybe I'm crazy to suggest that Disney might want to try Star Wars meets Star Wars, but we know they can't do that, I digress. Anyway, with the Acolyte trailer, Disney Star Wars has managed to do the unthinkable, the unimaginable. They've brought us all together again, just not in the way they intended, because aside from a few clapping seals, everyone hates it. As far as I know, this is the first Disney Star Wars project to be ratioed on YouTube, and that's certainly going to get worse as time goes on, and after watching it, I understand why. Close your eyes. Your eyes can deceive you. We must not trust them. Coincidentally, that's exactly what Leslie Headland said to all of Harvey Weinstein's clients before leading them into his office. Tell me what comes into your mind. I see diversity. I see inclusion. I see equity. And lesbians in space! Oh, and it doesn't end there, although I wish it did, because apparently Lucasfilm hasn't leaned into the South Park meme enough. Put a chick in it, make her gay! Put a chick in it, make her name it gay! Put a chick in it, make her gay! Put a chick in the linguine and make her f***ing gay! And I want it lame! It doesn't make sense. It really doesn't, yet. It does, because this is Disney Star Wars, son. What happened? Well, Perry, George Lucas's timeless story was subverted and destroyed by a bunch of ideological effeminate men and women. Oh wait, that's not you, Perry? <laughs> My bad. Anyway, apparently we've gotten it all wrong because Star Wars is not about good or bad. The best parts about Star Wars is there is no good or evil. It depends on what side you're standing on, truly, you know what I mean? Through the ages, I've seen evil take many forms. To be fair to Harvey Weinstein's former personal assistant, Leslie Headland, it's like the old saying goes. I mean, right after, look the other way when it comes to her. Write what you know. This isn't about good or bad. This is about power and who is allowed to use it. And Harvey Weinstein's former personal assistant would probably know a thing or two about that. And as far as the Acolyte trailer telling you what this series is about, I have no idea. Other than bland, diverse actors in bland robes to bland music.
in another bland D plus series from a showrunner who was asked what her favorite Star Wars was and couldn't answer the question. So when people are like, what's your, what's your favorite Star Wars movie? I'm like, there is no Star Wars movie. There is only Star Wars. <laughs> And if the Acolyte trailer wasn't bad enough, the remaining Star Wars fans got another kick in the balls on the very same day. You may or may not be aware there's a little proxy battle going on over at Disney between Nelson Peltz and Bob Iger. And the weatherman Bob Iger seems to be a bit panicked about the whole thing and he's calling in all the big guns, which includes one disappointing yet unsurprising name. Everything in your body says don't, you can't. And these are my kids. All those Star Wars films. All the Star Wars films. They were your kids. Yeah, well, they are, right? You know, I and sell you them sold off. them. I sold them to the white slavers that take these things and and. Uh, <laughs> okay, but but I mean, but despite all of his mumbling and grumbling on how Disney has treated his children, in the end, George Lucas sided with the white slavers. From the Hollywood Reporter, George Lucas backs Disney and Bob Iger in proxy fight, creating magic is not for amateurs. Yet Disney has proven that you can pay people and they can still be worse than amateurs. Creating magic is not for amateurs. When I sold Lucasfilm just over a decade ago, I was delighted to become a Disney shareholder because of my long-term admiration for the iconic brand and Bob Iger's leadership, Lucas said in a statement Tuesday. When Bob recently returned to the company during a difficult time, I was relieved. No one knows Disney better. I remain a significant shareholder because I have full faith and confidence in the power of Disney and Bob's track record of driving my beloved Star Wars right off a cliff. Oh, I'm sorry, driving long-term value. I have voted all of my shares for Disney's 12 directors and urge other shareholders to do the same. George Lucas was never gonna side with Nelson Peltz, who was backed by Ike Perlmutter. And it was clearly a business and a political decision. Listen, I'm not gonna judge George for wanting to live out his life in peace. He's earned it, he's a legend, and the only thing he's really responsible for is selling Star Wars to Disney, and quite frankly, we all thought that was a good idea at the time, and little did we know it was a deal with the devil and hiring Kathleen Kennedy. But the rest of this lays right at the feet of Bob Iger, Kathleen Kennedy, and the rest of the insane asylum that's Lucasfilm. Disney Star Wars is a zombie franchise. It's a corpse that keeps getting defiled, and every time they trot it out, it rots the entire legacy. The good news is every time Disney releases some new Disney Star Wars, there's more people coming to our side and it's bringing the world together to roast the hell out of it. Because the comment section on the Acolyte trailer is glorious. After watching this, I no longer fault Anakin for what he did. <laughs> Nobody criticizes Jar Jar Binks ever again. And I have to agree with that. I love this one. <laughs> Oh my god, it's so wonderful and diverse. My wife's boyfriend will love it. <laughs> I love the part when the sis said, it's acolyting time, then slashed through 20 younglings. I love the part where he said, so, that's it, huh? We're some type of acolyte. <laughs> Close your eyes, what do you see? I see someone that could have alerted the world to what Harvey was doing, but didn't. <laughs> okay, the main question is, does anyone in this show survive after being stabbed with a lightsaber? I think that's a good question, and the answer is probably yes. Close your eyes, what do you see? I see Zendaya. And sand, lots of sand. It's rough and coarse, and it gets everywhere. This isn't about good or evil, it's about the message, and who gets to use it. And then there's the poster with all of its subtle imagery. I mean, what's the first thing you think of when you see this, especially when it's connected to Disney and Lucasfilm? Admittedly, I still get a little surprised at Disney Star Wars' commitment to failure. It is absolute. And breaking news, Star Wars is dead. Still. It died in October of 2012 when George sold it to Disney, although most of us didn't know it yet. It died for me personally after I watched The Last Jedi the one and only time. And what I said back then remains true. You can't put the milk back in the titty. The good news is while we wait for Disney to finally hit rock bottom is we can all come together and point and laugh because everyone hates the acolyte and that's a good thing. If you like what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. If you didn't like what you heard, I thank you for listening this long. I will see you in the next video. Nerdverotic.com, please subscribe.